Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Gloomhaven Guildmaster. It's likely we'll be levelling up the Crankheart this uh, this level uh, so that they become level 4, swapping them out for someone else. Um, and the Night Shroud is likely to make it to level 3 and we'll we'll keep them in and we'll keep, uh, keep pushing their experience. Now, in the last episode we desperately, desperately needed a way to apply wound, really or some kind of piercing to, to get past the shield of the wind demon. That was our biggest falling down point. So I think we're not going to go back and um, hit the Savas Temple of the Unending Blizzard. Um, not going to do that this time. But I was thinking over in the Enchantress, for the Crack Heart, we haven't really looked at what we're going to be doing with them. And for the first couple of, uh, of cards, Crater is going to be with us until the end of the game. We only really need 75 in order to stick a wound on that. That could be really quite effective. And the same for Massive Boulder. And we could also improve the range of it. And that would make quite a significant difference, being able to do that at range 4. Same with the uh, the old um, Crater. So these are these are two things I've, I've considered spending our gold on to give the Crag Heart a little bit of a boost. Another thing that we could potentially upgrade is sentient growth, but as you can see, because of the fact it's level 2, because of the fact that it's got an area of effect, and it's, um, yeah, it, the compounding cost of all of that really quite adds up. Adding more area costs 91, potentially adding a wound in the area, um, adding a bless in the healing. Sentient growth has got the potential to be really amazing. Definitely has the potential to be really amazing. But it's also going to be very expensive to level up. Uh, let's have a look. What was the other card? Level 3 one was Blunt Force. That was it. This is one that we definitely want to boost up as well. But... At a minimum, we're going to need 100 gold to do anything worthwhile with it. So I think it's probably worth us holding off until we've got 75 gold and then considering whether Crater or Massive Boulder is going to be more useful for us to stick a wound on. Now, with Massive Boulder, if I just select it very quickly, all allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer one damage. They don't suffer the wound or the poison or whatever it is. So that's not really going to be a problem. Um, but still... None of this is Pierce. None of this is Pierce. And having a look through the Craghart's abilities, we don't really have Pierce as an option, at least not at this level. Potentially when we get higher and we've got more cards to pick from. Um, but nothing here is Pierce related. So it's all, all things like direct damage by pushing um, enemies into obstacles. Obstacles, not walls, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, there is there is definitely some some options. Adding range with nature's lift, but that's another burn. Augment. It's it's potentially going to mean that the crack heart isn't the right choice for um, for the next. Uh, well, going going back to that unending blizzard. So we're going to go somewhere else. Is the short of what I was uh, saying with that. Um, I think it's going to be good for us to go somewhere where it doesn't matter too much about uh, piercing, of course, where high damage is going to be useful. So, let's go into the darkness. Cultists have driven out Keepers of the Dome, a group of historians dedicated to looking after the structure. Let's go and kill them all. Up from Toadmore we go. Oh, and there's an encounter on the way. The road you're on leads you to a narrow cliffside path, the only route in sight to reach the bottom. You begin to descend. You notice the cliff face here is becoming smoother as you descend. Mysterious etchings and carvings start to emerge as you examine the wall. Uh, we're not going to take the gold. Uh, we don't want to be cursed on the next thing, and I don't think it would actually give it to us. So we'll just carry on walking, unnerved by the magic at work. You decide to press on without interfering. The dome was once a great arena for contests between the realm's best fighters, but has since become more of a monument to the value of past generations. A small group of historians now reside there, and it is one of them that you meet on reaching the vicinity of the structure. 
She informs you that a number of months ago, some dark-clad cultists arrived and threatened them, forcing them to move away from the main structures. Ever since, they've been barred access. She believes the cultists can be found in the lower levels of the dome, where many of the past contestants' bodies were interred. You follow her directions into the darkness below. Okay, um, I think we'll go for Straggler on the Cragheart because I really want us to be killing three or more mobs with the Cragheart. Um, and we'll go for Aggressor on the Night Shroud. Don't know how likely that's going to be, but we can certainly try for it. And we need to kill all enemies. You certainly expected to find cultists down here, and of course in the garb of the Umbran League. What you didn't expect were night demons. It seems they are not content with raising the dead, but now in collusion with demons, they must be stopped. Alright, so kill all enemies in all rooms. There is two rooms, which means in order for Aggressor to work, we just have to open this door before these guys all die horribly. That seems fine. So, Rumbling Advance. We use Rumbling Advance, we use our boot, we get in between, we do a bit of damage to everyone. That's nice. Very happy with that. We would also want to have backup ammunition on... Hmm, maybe... Maybe it'd be better to go Blunt Force and get the Retaliate in there. No, we can do... We can do Blunt Force Retaliate next turn. Okay, so Rumbling Advance gets us in, forces damage on them. And uh, Opposing Strike seems like such a good choice when we're that close to them. We'll do Opposing Strike. I think just murdering this guy with Spirit of the Night, certainly having Spirit of the Night ready to murder someone is going to be a very good choice. So we'll do Smoke Step and Wings of the Night, so that's going to make us invisible and get Dark out ready for next turn. Probably we'll just step up this way and we'll stab this guy once. Night Demons are going to move and attack. They're going quickly, actually. All adjacent enemies and allies will suffer damage, so having, having both of us together is potentially bad. Cultists are then going to heal up a little. Okay, he's actually come in here, so... Ow! It's a little painful, but it's not too bad. That's really quite painful, though. Hmm, so, who do we think is worth... You're, you're the one who's worth stabbing. There's no question about it, so... Step up to here have the attack. It's a shame we couldn't block it with the shield and use the shield retaliation on it. Definitely not the worst. Uh, we don't need to become non-invisible again. Opposing strikes actually going to work better across these two, but you're going to die, so I think we're not actually going to end up using opposing strike. Not the way we anticipated. Okay, we're not going to use Rumbling Advance. We're going to activate Opposing Strike and we're going to self-heal. That's what we're going to do. Oh no! You have injured yourself. And then healed up a little, but still better than nothing. Okay, so definitely not what I anticipated. Uh, we'll do Blunt Force, and then... You're gonna die, or you're gonna die. Either way, it's gonna be Dancing Shadows to move to, and Spirit of the Night to kill one of them. So, you or you being dead, what do we do after that? Crushing Grasp is a really solid strike. Forceful Storm is a great area. Crater would allow us to push this guy back into the trap, which is a huge trap, actually. 
so I don't care that we don't have backup ammunition on yet. Or push you back into the trap, which is even better. Yeah, right, Blunt Force and Crater, that's what we're doing. So Night Demon Elite is going to die, hopefully, before he gets to attack. Night Demon is going to just do really nasty stuff. And the Cultists are going to summon Skeletons, which I really don't like. So we're going to have to choose between dealing with Skeletons or dealing with Night Demons. And I think we're going to have to get the Night Demons gone because those attack fives are just too nasty. We could take five damage here. And we could kill you. Okay, that, that's what we'll do. We'll step in. Step in two. Stopping the extra skeletons. Let's get Spirit of the Night back. Crater. We'll try and do as much damage as possible. It's not quite going to be enough. But it might die from the retaliation. Um, and actually, you're only moving two. You're moving three. I really want to make sure that the Night Shroud is safe from this. I think we're going to have to just move to here. That is no. I'm gonna burn a card for that. Let's uh, let's lose. Let's lose crushing grasp. Jesus, no way I'm taking ten damage on a hit. I only went after that one anyway. All right, well, shield it up. Give him some retaliation. It's annoying, but there's not really much we can do. Okay, uh, we need to get backup ammunition out so that we can start doing useful stuff. And sentient growth uh, is going to allow us to do a little bit of healing over here. Cloak of Shade will generate dark for us. And I think Black Knives will get a muzzle out, so we'll, we'll focus on attacking here. Cultist is going to summon another Bones and hurt himself a little. That's way more powerful than I wanted to be dealing with. Let's lose Empowering Void. Okay. That's a problem dealt with. Yep, take no damage. Let's just do the retaliation. Crack heart, right, move into here. Little bit of healing. Little bit of attacking. Oh, that's that's very unfortunate. There's the backup ammunition. We're gonna hit him and do forced damage on these guys next turn. So it's not going to be too bad. Okay, Earth and Clod, Massive Boulder. And we can do Doomed Breeze and Spirit of the Night, and that's going to that's gonna kill everything here. Ooh, we need to not kill this guy until we've opened the door. So let's start pushing up to the door, actually. Okay, so pushing up to the door, yeah, we, we just need to push for it. It's a shame, but 
it is what it is. I would love to kill someone, but alas, I cannot. At least this guy's going to be a bit, bit damaged. Uh, right, so heal up self. Massive boulder. I know it's going to be at a disadvantage, but it should still be fine. I want to hit you, but I'm not going to, just out of an abundance of caution. Killed him. Damaged this one. That's what we wanted. Okay, Falls Full Storm, Dirt Tornado, we're pushing up this way. Uh, it's going to be a short rest. Unfortunate losing Doomed Breeze, but we need to open the door and see what's in there. We can use Winds of the Night to become invisible, so Cloak of Shade, Wings of the Night. Let's get that door open and see what we're dealing with. Oh, he's going to potentially heal himself up. That's interesting. Okay, in the next room. Cultists are going to do a little bit of moving, not really a problem. We kind of want to aim for the guy at the back. I'd love to get this guy onto a trap, but uh, it is what it is. Having the Night Demons clustered together could be kind of cool. Uh, skip and make it visible. There we go. One, two, three, and stab. Good. One, two, three. It's a pain, but we'll... Oh, maybe we just... Maybe we just wallop him. Forceful Storm is there for just this kind of purpose. And now we know what, what we're dealing with in the next room. Not great. We'll do a, a long rest next turn because we kind of need to. Over the back, we do have Dark available, so we can use Spirit of the Night... So let's move slowly and hope that we're able to kill something worthwhile. Hypothetically, you could come a bit close and we could end up killing you, or you could summon something which would suck. If you summon something, we'll end up killing this guy or this guy. So the most useful thing would probably be Dancing Shadows to move us around, but we want to go slowly, so... Yeah, let's do this way around. Night Demons are moving in, this is good. Living Bones are moving in, Cultists are moving in, all of this is good. He's moved exactly there, though. So I think we're going to have to kill this one. So step on in. Uh, skip the rest of the movement. It's working quite well. Nice long rest. Bit of healing, and we will lose. Let's lose Forceful Storm. Okay. We need to move at least three. If we're going to be doing massive boulder or crater. So dirt tornado would move us far enough to do that kind of thing. In theory, I want you to be invisible, so we would need Wings of the Night back. Or we push 
for the Elite to really start hitting them. Smoke Step allows us to... In fact, Smoke Step and Black Knives allow us to double down on hurting you, but it does leave us a bit exposed to both of these. I think that's probably fine for us, though. But it means I want, I want the healing to be up and in sooner rather than later. So let's say Crater and Mass Boulder... And we can use the boots. So we can crater, leap away. One, two, three, four, five, six, land. Yeah, okay. That's kind of going to work. Cultist doing healing, which is annoying. But it's not too bad. Night Demon, we need to be out of range for them. We're not quite going to be out of range for them. But Dark's not around, so it's not too much of an issue so get the hit that's a nice hit get another hit could not have asked for a better strike well done night shroud oh look at that little bit of healing doing everything he can Ouch. Uh, we'll just lose Silent Force over that. This does mean we're going to burn Crater to get over there. But I think it's worth it. So there's one. Come land over here. And even though these are at a disadvantage... that's worth it. Okay. Blunt force. We'll hit you as hard as we can. And Earth and Claude will get some healing over here, I think. Or Rumbling Advance will do a little bit of... Sentient Growth. We'll step in, we'll do some healing, we'll do some attacking combined. Short Rest on the Night Shroud. Want to be invisible, so Dancing Shadows, Wings of the Night, let's get invisible quickly. Cultist is going to summon Living Bones. That's obviously not good. I'm very happy with this. We're invisible, we're safe. And we're getting money. Right, Crackheart. The biggest, the biggest hit. Ooh, wallop. We don't even need to put the healing on. Let's um, let's step in, we'll get the money. We've got time to go and grab all the money. That's what I'm thinking. We've got time to go and grab all the money. Let's do all the healing on the Night Shroud. Night Shroud is going to come and walk and grab this. Oh, you're just out of range. Okay, did not quite anticipate that properly. So we'll step in like this and we'll get some healing over here. This is mostly just so we don't accidentally end up in trouble. So Night Shroud. We don't want to burn. Instead, let's just move on in. Because we can we can kill this guy whenever we fancy. Uh, Crackheart, you're going to have to do a long rest. Hmm. We'll do a long rest on the Night Shroud as well. He's just staying still. This is annoying. I want him out of the way. Okay, let's lose Earth and Clod, because that's not going to be that useful to us. And on the Night Shroud, we'll lose Black Knives.
if we move slowly. We can say sentient growth and massive boulder. One, two, three, four. That potentially like get us round him and into the doorway. And over here. Wings of the night would get us invisible again. The super fast move is Dancing Shadows, Cloak of Shade. That's what we'll do next turn. So this turn it kind of has to be these. And we'll move as slowly as possible. He's not moving! Oh, the frustration. The frustration is real. Okay, we can't push him back. We might have to just kill him. So next turn, we could like push through and grab a little bit of gold. So if this turn we almost kill him, maybe that would be fine. So if we're trying to almost kill him. That's an attack too. Undo that. If we're trying to almost kill him, let's step in. Do a little bit of healing. Maybe we'll get a plus one? Okay, that's a plus one. Uh, let's, let's skip the attack with Massive Boulder. Yeah, it's going to have to be step in, get the hit. Okay. So, Night Shroud. One, two, three, four, five. Potentially, we could push through. <coughs> Except we're going to be going first. Which means we need the crack heart to move away, and actually, you need to do a long rest instead and draw him out. Yeah, draw him out to here. And. We're not going to be attacking, so this will be fine. Unless we get plus two. Times two is fine. Living Bones comes in, gets out of the way. That's great. Long rest, we will lose Wings of the Night. Okay. Long rest on the crack heart. Dancing shadows and cloak of shade. Move this in close enough to grab a bit of gold. This is this is just to try and get as much gold as possible. Crackheart is going to kill it with Rumbling Advance, uh, so we'll lose Sentient Growth. Well, I say it's going to kill it with Rumbling Advance. We're going to probably kill it with Massive Boulder as an actual attack, but worst case, we have Rumbling Advance as backup. Uh, short Rest over the back. Cloak of Shade, Spirit of the Night, let's grab a little bit more. We need to kill him before he does anything, right? Three gold there, three gold there, both the same. Let's go for this one. It's 
So kind of, we need to do both of them. Massive boulder on him. It'll do. I'll take it. And, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just leave that last bit of gold that we can't reach. But a win is a win. And 24 gold is definitely a win. Peace returns to the dome after its most recent battle for decades is now over. And both of our characters managed to get their extra XP bonuses. 13 ability XP for the Cragheart, that's big. And we have the black knife design. This is another one that I was considering would potentially work for our wonderful Night Shroud. Um, it's one-handed, it allows us to add curses, and when we do a long rest it refreshes. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, but I think we'll hold off for the moment because obviously we're saving up our money for the enhancements. It seems the historians have found a stash of unpleasant ritualistic knives used by cultists. I'm sure they'll come in handy for someone like you. Okay, we have two level ups to do and a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's start, I think, with the crack heart because we know we're going to be cycling him out. At level four, we're going to want to get Rock Slide. Create three single hex obstacles in empty hexes within range four. Anyone next to one or more of them suffers two damage. This is direct damage. This is not blockable. This is great. This is amazing. It's a slow move, but it's guaranteed damage and it's anything that's touching them. And with three single hex obstacles, you can hit a lot of space. Uh, kinetic Assault's fine. Move one, attack four. A move on the top is always nice. And attack four is pretty solid. The range retaliation burns, so I'm not, not a big fan of that. But uh, Rock Slide, we are taking. And we're going to substitute something, probably Dirt Tornado, actually. It's about the same speed, but Dirt Tornado is all right. Dirt Tornado would be great with... Uh, with a, an upgrade like Wound, so you can apply Wound in an area. Um, but that's not really what we're going for with the Crag Heart. So th this is this is what we'll have. And over on the perks, I did say about potentially getting days, having additional plus twos in there would be very nice. Getting rid of the dust, though, would just make things a lot more consistent very quickly. So we'll do that first, and then we'll start going for the upgrade upgrades. Over on the Night Shroud, level four, I th uh, sorry, level three, uh, I think it was Armor of the Night that we wanted. So not terribly, but this is good. This is a push card. And there's been times when I've said we don't really have a push ability. Also, move four on the bottom. It's pretty, pretty nice. But this, attack four, potentially self-healing, shielding self and generating dark, this, this is a very nice card for the way we want to be building. So we're going to need to lose something. It might be time to take off Dancing Shadows and put on Armor of the Night. We do use this for high mobility though. So if I was going to swap it out, Smoke step we use to generate dark. We, we could stay still. Yeah, let's swap out smoke step. And across onto the perks. Probably. Dust again, very useful. Twilight followed by Umbra. This is this is a long, long-term upgrade. Self-healing. Self-healing is very useful. I think we'll get self-healing this time. And next time we'll push for dust and then we'll do the enshroud stuff. I think that's that's how things are going to work. The other thing that I was talking about was uh, potentially buying 
boots for the night shroud, so we might do that before I get distracted and spend the money on something else. But first of all, the trainer has got the Earth Mastery ready for us to potentially put on as an enhancement. We're not going to do that. Um, I think any time you would do that, it's much better to have the any element one. It's just it takes more money, of course. So depends on if you're building for one character for yourself or if you're building for the group as a whole. Yeah, let's let's buy those boots. So Night Shroud boots, boots of sprinting. It's expensive. But this is going to really allow us to reposition. Being able to add four move to get where we need to get after we've generated dark. This actually, in combination with our armor of the night, if we're using armor of the night to generate the dark, it doesn't matter that we're not moving closer to the enemy. Because uh, if you remember, we had smoke step before, which is, it gets us a little bit closer and generates. This doesn't matter. We'll just uh, we'll just run closer to them. We're back down to 22 gold though, but we have more useful equipment. And also we're going to swap out the Crackheart. You have done well. You are level four. It's time to bring back the Plague Herald. And the Plague Herald, as we know, is all of the fun ranged poison. This is uh, this is definitely going to have some good good potential going forwards nice nice poison combination i think um, but that is of course going to be next time thank you very much for coming along everyone i do hope you have enjoyed this as always if you have be sure to give a big thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and do so and you'll be told when the next episode goes live otherwise i'll see you next time for another episode of gloomhaven see you soon